My name is Kenti Yangtze Rinpoche. The meaning of Yangtze, it means rebirth. Every living being, every sentient being is a Yangtze because it's reborn in this world again and again, non-stop. But from this rebirth, there's one particular type of rebirth. It's called the incarnation, as we call it in Tibetan, Tulku, because it has a reason to be reborn. It's reborn to serve and to help all sentient beings. So I think Kensal Moshe was one of the completely authentic and great Tibetan master of the whole history of Tibet. And I think the best image for, for the Western thought is like that of a great saint. I think people have this notion of a saint being a, a human example of, of perfection. And that Kensal Moshe embodied that very clearly. one of my important guru since now quite some time as I received um, so many teachings many important teachings from him I feel um, very very grateful to him is he a great practitioner great scholar you see, he always remained very gentle, so very how to say, the humble. I think for something like Epstein's Rinpoche, every single sentient being is a heart son because I think he had 
such heartfelt caring and compassion for everyone. Yes, Chindramaji was special because of his kindness, because of his compassion, because of his wisdom, because of his fearlessness based on wisdom. His ability to make every single person feel unignored. He's always Tungu Kensu Rinpoche, though of course was a great enlightened being and did a tremendous amount of enlightened activities in this world and benefited countless beings. But in the end, he had to change the body. When I was four years old, I was recognized as the incarnation of Tingo Khensi Rinpoche. I spent the first years of my life living with my parents. My parents were actually married by His Holiness Tilgo Khensi Rinpoche. I was told by uh, his father, Chol Rinpoche, that Trisha Rinpoche had these great visions that our son is the young Sikh of his great guru. It came to me as a surprise and as a great happiness, you see. Very strong blessing. Oh, you know, he chose, I'm blessed, you see. So I felt that there must have been a very strong connection that he chose his rebirth to be in our family. <laughs> Mato, <laughs> Word Yangtze means who came again into existence. And that's a good word because reincarnation is a very misleading idea of, uh, you know, some kind of entity or consciousness or person, of course, with that idea of ego being sort of transplanted from one body into another, and which is, of course, completely wrong because there's no such thing in, in Buddhist philosophy and no such thing in, in reality. Because the, there's a, there's a stream of consciousness which for ordinary beings is a confused state of consciousness that's sort of defined 
by the amount of mixture of good and bad action or thoughts and words we have done in the past that condition that, that stream of consciousness and therefore that stream is determined by by our mixture of good uh, positive and negative action in the case of a, of a realized person that has dissolved all the negative emotion that stream is no more propelled by karma it's just propelled by the magnitude of that person's prayer for the beings so there's no more a stream of ordinary consciousness it's just sheer wisdom continues no. my father told me that he have got his okay. hair yeah. then after that my mother came then my mother said don't do it then he stopped yeah. and she he was crying yeah. and then my mother said um, can your father cut your hair I really loved my hair my long hair and the time when they recognized me they said we must cut your hair so slowly I became a bold boy at that time <laughs> I felt like a sense that my life was changing the whole way that I lived, like this simple life, father, mother, and one little monk, and my brother, sister, and my caretaker. I thought that was the only world that I would live. But then, so many people, you see a big monastery, a big name. I saw many people that I didn't know. And then this picture of a, I'm sorry, but this old man with the long hair, gracefully looking at people. And then they say, uh, you are the young C, we say, it's like the reincarnation of this teacher. And a uh, few things changed after that. It was a new world for me to explore. Everything a uh, guru or master, spiritual master does is in teaching. So we are supposed to learn that even Rinpoche passing away is part of a teaching and showing an impermanent, even a Buddha passed away. But uh, we as a human being, still with a negative uh, ignorance, uh, we still miss him very much. Yansi Rinpoche was first recognized by Trishir Rinpoche and of course, we have total confidence in Trishir Rinpoche, we have faith in Trishir Rinpoche, so there was no doubt about uh, the reincarnation. Once we found the reincarnation and Yang Rinpoche, even though his uh, physical form is different, size very small and very young, but still we felt that you Yang know, Rinpoche has come back. That emptiness, empty part, the missing part uh, was filled. Uh, since I was five years old, I, I stayed with, uh, with Kenzer Mbishay. From my side, uh, of course, I was very small, very young, and uh, I don't know anything about spiritual uh, master or anything. So he was a wonderful grandfather. And gradually, I started to study a little bit and learn a little bit about uh, spiritual master. And then my sort of love of grandfather changed into a kind of a devotion. And I feel very strong uh, devotion, and I think I can say that uh, still is growing.
Many of Kinterbuch's friends and disciples gathered for my instrument, which took place on a cold December morning. He used to carry me on his shoulder. At that time, I was entering this monastery. This big gate with all the stone floors, this Tibetan people are dancing, and then all people around looking at me happily. So I was kind of shocked. And I'm going into this big monastery, a big throne there, and all are surrounded by other teachers, old teachers. When he was sitting on the chair with the, his attendant, he was asking him many things. I said, what did Rambuchi tell you? And he says, oh, Rambuchi was telling him, my seat is not this, my seat is that one. And uh, then he told Rambuchi, Rambuchi, you must wait because Trish Rambuchi is making the purification ceremony for you. So when they finish the offering, then you have to sit on the throne. He says, oh, why, why are they saying so long prayers? The ceremony was quite long, but I was having a kind of a good time because everybody was looking at me and if I did something funny, everybody laughed. And it was kind of like a nice uh, time for me. It was a um, great joy. And also at the same time, there was a little bit of a sad part to it also. But she always used to say that um, when it's a tulku, then the tulkus are always taken away from the family and they live in their own monasteries. The happy part of it is to feel that the previous Kenzer Rinpoche, his oldest Kenzer Rinpoche, chose Cholo Rinpoche and myself to be his parents is the joyful part of it, you see. Oh, 
fell now I'm not going to see my parents. But they strongly told me, now you're going to live in this monastery and uh, we will see you all the time and you don't have to worry about us. You might miss us, at that time we will call you. And they said, but you will be taken care of from Ramjan. He is your father and he is your like parent. He's everything to you. So you don't have to worry about anything. They say, even though they feel a bit sad to let you go, but they feel a very happiness in their heart because their son, he might achieve something. When I was seven years old, I was living in the isolated kingdom of Bhutan. Here I could live a peaceful life and begin my formal training. Bhutan, in a way, is a very, very blissful place. We have a lot of nature and uh, culture and everything. Because the good thing about Bhutan is that people have a lot of devotion to Buddhists. They just have so much devotion that you can see a lot. Of course he was from Tibet, but my predecessor used to love Bhutan and he used to say Bhutan was his next homeland. My home in Bhutan is beneath Taksang Hermitage, known as the Tiger's Nest. Taksang is a place where meditators have practiced for more than a thousand years. Tilgo Kenzer Mbache practice extensively at Taksang. Mbache lived for more than 20, 25 years in Bhutan. Never bought land, never built a house for himself. But this land was bought just a year before he passed away. And he decided to build a house here. So beginning we didn't know why Mbache was doing that. But we were very happy because Mbache's planning means Mbache is going to live longer. But somehow Rambach did not uh, live till even till finish the house here. Then now we realize why he bought the land. Such a perfect environment and uh, no pollution and uh, space for the reincarnation to run around. A Turku even has to go through the life of a normal boy. Sometimes difficulty, sometimes happy, good time, sometimes, how to say, good attitude, sometimes very bad attitude, and sometimes a bit strict discipline, sometimes a bit relaxed. So we need everything to balance us. Kimbok taught me since I was a child all the basic thing how to read and write Tibetan grammar. I have a very good true friend, Torja Tuku and Tashishimi. We were like brothers. Some traditional 
uh, ancient tradition, they are very, very strict and, uh, you know, they lock up the child <laughs> for studying. You know, they cannot go out and all that. But we didn't, of course, do all this because previous cancer budget never did this to me. So we let him be himself and uh, so that's how we did the training. Today is... Today is Thursday. It was quite challenging to be a woman in this environment. But Rimshay gave me quite a free reign. Back, up and down. Down, down. down. From the beginning there was never a fixed curriculum. But I think some of my more creative teaching methods were seen as something of a joke at first by the traditionalists. Ow. Until Rimshay and his little friends started speaking English. These ones sound like, oh, crow, snow, if I plant a little seed, it goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's growing. Growing, growing, growing. All the generations. You want pictures for all of them? Yes. Some other teachers who are very, very hard-headed, Tibetan traditional, they want you to repeat this person and that person and very structured. And if you do that, they say, no, this, no. But Ramzi Rambachi, just let me be who I am. And I know from the depth of my heart that Ram Ramjai Rambachi has no expectations. He never said to me that, oh, Ramjai Rambachi, I expect you to be this. He advises me to be a good person. Mm, orange juice, yes. And uh, Coca-Cola, yes. And uh, milk, yes. And water, yes. And uh, lemon. Lemonade? Lemonade. The base of the Buddha's teachings is to have compassion and to be a good human being. This sounds very simple, this sounds very easy, but if you really analyze it carefully, it is not easy as we think. It is not as easy as we perceive it. And if we can take that, and if we can keep that in our heart, that is just unthinkable. Of course, the one of our goal is to be enlightened. The setting this path of a meaningful life, a meaningful path, then now, from now on, whatever you do is very meaningful, not just for yourself, but for others' benefits. I think it's really unparalleled what we actually see here, what Ramjir Muche has been able to offer to Nangsir Muche. It's a mixture of you know, traditional with the, you know, some elements of a modern, as the time and the culture and the people have changed, the education system has to also change, even if it is with the Rinpoche. So, Ramjan Rinpoche having the foresight of uh, not being so dogmatic, and how being a dogmatic, sticking to only traditional way of upbringing, how it doesn't serve, has really provided this modern element to it. This first? Like this? Bow your head. Bow your head. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. Proper training for that proper time is necessary. Judge Chenzin Bichi's generation had a different kind of challenge. I mean, we all knew that. At the, towards the end of their life, you know, they had to flee from their own seat. This generation has their own challenge. Everything is much more smaller, bigger, quicker, slower, everything, you know. They have their challenge. So far, uh, if you are asking me, I think it's very impressive, but Wow, challenge is very, very high.
accompanied by Ramjan Rinpoche, I went to say prayers at the Mahabodhi temple and the Bodhi tree, the site of Buddha's enlightenment and the most sacred place in Buddhism. If I talk about the Buddha's enlightenment, it's a very vast thing to talk about. There's so many steps, steps, steps that you go through. He found something when he became enlightened. That was like an answer to him. The one of the biggest answer is this world the truth or is this a dream? So Buddha was searching for that and he got the answer. It is a dream because the whole world is made of our delusion, uncontrolled mind. So when he recognized that, if he wanted to look for a way to, how shall I say, wake up from this dream. <coughs> Taking the middle way, and that is like the knowing the truth of your own self. So that was the time he became enlightened. I'm studying about the Buddha's life or Milarepa's life, about many, many, like, a master's life. Um, what are you studies getting you ready for? Why why are you studying? Uh, why my study is that I want to make the sentient beings happy. In Bhutan, first I was not listening to my teacher. I was a little bit naughty and bad and not listening. And then every time my teacher said to me, please don't do that, you have to be very good. And then I didn't listen. Then one day, just one voice, you know, I do you one voice, something like a voice telling me this and this and this, this, and you do that bad and that, that bad. Sometimes it's so sad in my dream, so sad that I want to cry. I dreamed of him one time. I can see my previous Chandra Buche, and then he was smiling at me. He said to me that, please learn your, uh, learn your Dharma and what your uh, teacher says, learn that good. If you didn't learn that good, uh, you will be uh, punished. Then he smiled at me and he tapped on my head. From Jaramuchi, he's very well and then I like him. He's very generous to me and then I never saw such grateful man as him. I am missing my father and mother and then I was talking to myself that why I'm very missing my parents. He is my parents.
every winter I would come back to Nepal where I could spend time with my family. After many months of not seeing him, there's this excitement. The family are always waiting for Ramich to be back. And uh, when we see him, it's, we're just filled with this wonderful feeling of family and gathering. I have four children. Two are the emanations. The elder one is reincarnation of Pakshaw Rinpoche, and both have incredible responsibilities as a Rinpoche. My younger son, his name is Lidingo. This is sweet with Jungbor Olang long name is this is Pak Chor Mbuchi, which is boss. All of which of us, Jamgo Pak Chor is this one. It's true. I love to be with them in a very informal way. They need that. They need to be loved in a very normal way. Sometimes it's beautiful when I have my children around me. They hang around us, the parents. And I see my children all wanting to be on my lap or on the lap of the father. They've all grown so big, I'm too small for them, you see, so it's not enough for me to do that, but it's beautiful. It's, it's just the moment I love most. <laughs> Tunji Rumbaji came to Shichen to give me the long journey thick empowerment. They were both teacher and disciple of each other. Rishi Moshe asked so many teachings and empowerments from Kensei Moshe. And also Kensei Moshe received back some other teachings from Rishi Moshe. But more than that, when they were together, so amazing the intimacy and also the depth of that discussion mixed with teasing each other all the time. So that was extraordinary to, to see him together. And also before Kansala Moshe passed away, he clearly said, no, if you have any, uh, you know, something you need as from the spiritual guidance, I mean, you go to Trishira Moshe. And so he really entrusted his disciples to the blessing and guidance of Trishira Moshe. I Parliament gives you both the permission to engage in specific practices and the blessing so that when you do engage in this practice there will be some fruit and result and you will progress. So this transmission is very precious and it has to be given without interruption from qualified master to disciple who then practice, accomplish or realize something. It is really the inner strength of the Tibetan tradition is the unbroken spiritual transmission. <laughs>
After my stay in Nepal, I returned to my home in Bhutan. Nepal, in my monastery, I have to be a bit uh, serious because that is my duty. But in Bhutan, I'm a bit relaxed and I can just do a little bit things that I want to do. We have some free time, or people have to call it downtime. People expect a lot from a reincarnation of Bill Kinsel Mbuchi, because as we all know that Kinsel Mbuchi was very, very well known. So like that, many people sort of look up to him. And uh, he's, uh, I think in English you say he has a big shoes. And which is uh, uh, responsible is to spread the Buddha Dharma. So on top of all the religious practice qualities, knowledge uh, of the philosophy and all that, I think good personality is, is a very important quality for the Lama. You know, like, uh, like Kenzer Bishop himself, always um, being gentle, always kind. Even if we don't have that quality like Kenzer Bishop, but even if we try a little bit, to show Rinpoche how to be a nice and how important it is and all that. When you were young and you were cherished as a tuku, someone important, and so you feel some sense of honor and what comes with the honor is a, a sense of responsibility. And then also a lot of your tutors, you know, kind of tell you how your predecessors have lived their life and what they did and one must actually try to do something similar. So you feel a little bit of you know, pressure too. Zika Kondorambi's teaching, what he gave me is, was direct to the mind advice and teaching. It seems that like my mind, the kind of a, my whole way of how I thought, changed a lot through his teaching. Being very childish and uh, ego, I became a bit of a uh, different person from that. 
Long time ago, I used to have this very big ego of that I am Tingu Shinzer Mache and I am the one. Having ego in my heart is a, is a very difficult life to live sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you feel that a little weight on your shoulder. That in itself is, you know, not a problem. You know, when we say weight, right away people think, oh, you know, it's not good. But to feel the weight, you know, is not necessarily bad. The weight comes with the situation. And you just have to know how to relate to the weight, you know, in a, you know, sound way. Of course, my predecessor had a very great connection with the royal family, especially Her Majesty, uh, the Queen Mother. And because Rinpoche was um, their teacher, and they were, they were his patron. The connection between that was amazing. It's like a steel chain that you cannot break. Queen Mother has been important to me in many, many ways. She's like a really a loving, caring, kind of like grandmother to me. <laughs> A little bit. Why? There's two cameras on you in Bhutan. I'm, Media I'm, retention. I'm used to it. When I was 15, I started to attend the Shedra, an intensive nine-year course of philosophical study. The way I'm trained in the Shedra is a very systematic way. Sometimes I feel like Dharma is a bit too difficult to understand. It's like all about analyzing things, and that you have to think about the, the last aim, the goal is to become enlightened and be like Buddha, that's very difficult sometimes for us to think. So a lot of doubts and that's quite common. I asked my teacher and they said it's quite common. I have uh, debates with my Tuku friend. The funny thing is all the Predecessor are like very close to my to my predecessor, which is Rmichi. So now they are reborn, and now I'm with them, and we are very good friends. 
When we do debate, it's not easy. This is very intense. We are debating about is there something called me existing or I? You can go into such a depth. It's a little like diving into the ocean and it's hard for you to come back. Every year we have exams which are designed and marked by another monastery. No one knows the results until they are announced at this ceremony. No favors given to anyone, included me. <laughs> My friends Torja Tulku and Tashichimi have passed. While attending the Shedra, I also received training in the Vajrayana, the most advanced meditation practice of Tibetan Buddhism. This may look quite cultural and religious, but the inner message is about understanding one's own intrinsic nature. It is not so much about religion and belief as having less ego grasping, less violence and more compassion. Everything that we're doing right now in the ritual, Dhamma dance, puja, is all Vajrayana practice. It's not really an easy thing to do, actually. There's uh, many, many things that you have to keep in your heart. Vajrayana uh, meditation is a high-tech meditation. Everything has a, a meaning behind. And skillful means way of transforming oneself. So in order to deal with our very, very complex mind and complex thoughts, so I think the Vajrayana skillful means way to transform all these 
into positive thinking. Basic thing is all about trying to cut down all your negative thoughts. Just like everything, just cleaning up everything. All the Buddhist practice, it is. Everything is mind training. My relation with Mbaji was a very. It's something that you won't get in this world easily. Sometimes I think, like, oh, me being with Ramjan Mbaji is just a very, very. Great chance for me, and and I think this will be my last chance. What do you call that? Bolta. In my next life, I might be reborn as a normal monk or just a normal lay person. I don't know if I will get a teacher like him. So sometimes I feel a bit thing like, oh, now when I have the chance, I will do everything to serve him and to make him happy. Very big day today. A bit, a little bit nervous. The black hat dance is an advanced Vajrayana practice. Is I have to take a big responsibility. The most difficult part is to keep up with people's expectations. That people expect you to be like your predecessor, or expect you to be a the perfect teacher. In this world, but that's very difficult to happen. Because I know myself, and I know that I will do the best I could. But I do a lot of mistakes, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to be a perfect person in this world. When I was 17, a celebration was held in honor of 100th anniversary of birth of Tilgo Kinsirubachi. The reason why we did this 100th anniversary is I thought it was a very good opportunity to remember Kinsirubachi. And then uh, the second reason was to introduce Yangtze Kinsirubachi. I think remembering Guru is for Bajayana practice is the most important thing. So this is sort of to remember Kenzirimbache and reconnect with the Kenzirimbache. One special uh, unique quality of Tibetan Buddhism is the pure lineage from Buddha till our masters. 
So when you find a, like someone like Kenji Rinpoche who has 100% all these qualities, then it's up to us to see how much can we see Buddha in him. Guru represents nothing but the teaching of the Buddha. I extremely feel happy of this gift and blessing that I got from J.P. Timbushin Zerambuji. This reminder that always tells me, oh, try to do a good thing, try to practice, try to study, try to be a good person. This small thing inside my mind is always reminding me. I feel this must be something like a blessing, like a gift. I'm not talking in a very Christian way where God gives you the gift of this, not, nothing like that. But extremely amazing and immense blessing from Javita Mishadana Pichai. Marvin Maram is uh, normally done during the big ceremonies. At the end of this, then we make a very, very big dedication, and all the Bajra brothers and sisters who participated in the ceremony will be linked with a scarf, white scarf. Everybody holds a lamp, and then uh, we make an uh, aspiration, dedication of the prayer. Remember of Guru, and then making uh, aspiration that we will all get enlightened together. Our root teacher is in the center of the mandala and we will all be reborn around this mandala. One main reason why we feel so strong towards the young Sri is because, because he is the reincarnation of our Guru. I feel 
that now this is the time for me to wake up and this is the time that uh, a small light bulb will appear in the dark room. Ramji Ramji until now very generously and with uh, his generosity and his loving compassion showed me the path. Now is my time to serve him back. And of course, the most important is serve him and serve my monastery. And I felt like this is the time that I have to do now. Now I cannot be a childish boy anymore. After the celebration, I went on a world tour visiting many of the centers that were established by Tilgo Kinsenbuch's heart sons. My biggest aim is just to fulfill all my teachers' wish and try to make them happy and try to be a good person. Here in Dordone, I gave my first ever public teaching. We all want to be happy and not to suffer. But that happiness that we are looking for is to have a good heart and uh, to free others from suffering. And so there's a piece of advice uh, from Shanti Deva that uh, all happiness comes from wishing others happiness and all suffering comes from seeking happiness for ourselves. So in that case, if wishing others happiness gives us happiness, so nevertheless, wishing the ultimate happiness to others will give us the ultimate happiness. Here on this wonderful and auspicious occasion, where all your friends from all over the country in this world, <laughs> you hold Chancellor Mitch's legacy, his lineage, and you are continuing his night activity. And our hope and aspirations for the future lies with you. And we love you. And we, we adore you, <laughs> and we respect you, and be completely at home. You can say anything you want. <laughs>
tout d'abord vous remercier de m'avoir invité ici. Je voudrais également vous demander de vous pardonner. People's expectation makes it a bit difficult because if I cannot live up to their expectation, they get really upset. If I do a little mistake, they may get upset. You have to walk in this road, in one road. You cannot walk in other road. That is one big uh, challenge that I'm facing. I really want to tell everybody, please don't have expectation to me. Because if you do, I'm scared that I may not be able to live up to that. Shenzhen Rinpoche, yes indeed, he lived in Tibet and it was a totally different kind of a environment. In a way it's very good because now we are modern, people are getting more open-minded, more new ideas, but these days people can go really crazy, like myself, being the teacher of supposedly having the name of His Holiness Shenzhen Rinpoche. Now we having a lot of problems because we have to face that, we have to fight the, the battle of that. battle between the superpower mundane world and our kind of a statement and that I have to say is not easy at all. In this kind of time that we can get attracted and seduced very easily. It's a, it's a big thing. So that you might all be, how could I say this, uh, all be curious of what I will say and I am very curious of what are you thinking. <laughs> but in either way we are both quite the same because we are both curious of each other. Surprisingly, I have forgotten everything I'm going to say, so <laughs> let's just, I will just look at your face, you look at my face, and let's just all freak out. Enlightenment doesn't mean that we go to in some sort of other place from this world and then we, I don't know, everything is like perfect, but enlightenment is just here, it's just based on our own mind, United, through, through practice and meditation that our mind increases its capability in like cutting through all the negative and all this diluted mind of ours and then one day when it's very pure that that moment is the enlightenment. American people are a little bit uh, work minded. Sometimes you might need some time off, relax or family time. I think they're looking for an answer. Either they're looking for an answer for their transcendental question or they're searching for 
a livelihood, a right livelihood. When they're in Dharma, they really take it seriously. They like to question a lot and like that. What, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, one thing I need to say, I didn't choose my life at all. I mean, I don't know who chose. I mean, my teacher chose me, but I don't know why did they choose. Uh, I sometimes wonder why did they choose uh, such a weird boy like me. Uh, and uh, I didn't really have any choice. I just had to, I, they just took me and put me in this big throne and said, you are the reincarnation of Chapiti Kuchitsan Vijay and they did all the ceremony and all that thing went on. Because first I thought when I was recognized and when I looked around, all my way of living was changed. When I looked at a person, everybody would like bow and everybody who spoke to me will be like very honographic and very polite. No one will dare to like speak. And I thought like, wow, I'm a big shot. I will never have any bullies or any problem like that. And uh, since I grew up, and now when I think about my life, I think well, is, that is not true. I mean, it's not that easy, this life. Well, it sounds like it's a fairly difficult life. Would you rather just be a normal person? Even I even have to say that to be a normal person, I don't think it's that uh, easy or very fun. Uh, um, I'm not really, I'm not saying bad things to you, I'm not criticizing you, but I'm just speaking, just saying it, how really uh, for you guys, is it that easy for your life? I mean, do you really enjoy it or do you really like to become somebody else? If I had a choice, I would just choose to become a very normal monk, not a high level or anything, and just to I don't know, just to experience everything. I don't want to be a narrow person. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't see anything right now. My future can be very good or my future can be a bit of a problem for me. I mean, I might face some big challenges. Of course, this this world is right now really into competition. People are losing their culture. They're trying to achieve something, but at the same time, they are even getting to a, a lot of trouble and a lot of difficulty. One thing I can see is these days people are really, really losing the trust to each other. The basic human sense, the trust and even the inner goodness, the inner peace of human being, that even we are losing it too. When we study Buddhism, it will hit our own anger, jealousy, hatred, that inner enemy. All the Buddha Dharma, the teachings, is all about helping you. It's only about helping you how to understand yourself, how to clarify your mistakes, how to be a better person and how to go through the difficulties in your life. What you really do, you keep it in your heart and through your heart one day you'll speak it out. And that is the real way. That is what I really call appreciation. Oh, that's what I really called love. The torch has been passed to me. Mr. Ramji already handed me the torch when I was born. That's your time to take it.